what a tremendous night and the weather held off for the uh, honoring of the first five uh, black football players to play at the University of Georgia. They came over and spoke to our team on Thursday. I thought they did a tremendous job. Uh, what a tremendous honor to have them and host them. And uh, Courtney did an unbelievable job uh, hosting them, and she has done an incredible job with our diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I'm really proud of what they were able to do and what we've got as part of our stadium for a long time. i also like to thank David Pollock. So he got honored for the College Football Hall of Fame. What a tremendous honor for him. Uh, and then our fan base. You know, our fan base came out loud and proud. They didn't take a week off. Uh, I think our student section has become very impactful from pregame warm-ups all the way through the game. But the guys played really hard. Um, so many guys played a big role in this game. Uh, it seemed like the wealth was spread around defensively and offensively. I thought uh, JT played with a high level of confidence, um, believed in what our guys around him could do, and he got the ball to our playmakers. Did a great job doing that. Um, Pod is a great kicker. It was great to get him back on track uh, there late in the second half. And uh, just proud of the hard uh, work our guys have put in. We just – we got to get better. And uh, we're not where we need to be. We didn't play as well defensively tonight as we have in the past. And uh, and we'll continue to improve. Okay, let's go to uh, Chip Towers and then uh, Seth Emerson. Coach, you mentioned it for a minute, but, but uh, just the end of the first half uh, seemed really critical for things. Uh, getting a safety out of that uh, and and then coming back down and getting the field goal. Can you just talk about uh, taking advantage of those last 24 seconds? Yeah, situational football is critical. And, um, you know, we, 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 we rep those exact situations every Thursday. And, man, I was really proud of the execution. Um, number one, they stopped us, which can't happen. We can't, we can't, you know, not have an opportunity. And he, he took the time out, which told me that he was – you know, going to try to use the clock and not let it run out. Uh, Amir Speed and Jake Camarda started that whole thing with uh, down in the ball inside the, the, the one, which is just elite. We practiced that really hard um, all camp. So Amir made a huge play. Jake made a huge play. And then the defense made a huge play. Then the special teams made a big play. And then we were able to save our timeouts. And uh, it was really big to get those, uh, those pass plays to set up uh, the field goal. I just thought that was a really good sequence to steal five points. Kirby, on offense, how much of it is that you're taking what the defense gives you? How much of it is that the passing game is just better than the running game for you guys right now? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's definitely that it's not we're taking what they give us. I think we're just better right now. Timing, throwing the ball, uh, spacing in routes. Um, and I actually thought we ran the ball better tonight. I mean, I don't know. We rushed for 184. It, it didn't seem like a struggle to run it as much as it did against UAB. Um, so t statistically, I was proud of our ability to run the ball. I thought our backs made some people miss. So I'm not, I'm not down on the run game tonight. I thought we improved there. But I do think uh, the timing in the passing game and, um, and our guys are, are pretty good pass pro guys. But if we're going to be in an elite team, you got to be able to be pretty good at both. I mean, there's a few teams, LSU, uh, they never had to run it two years ago. And I felt like they threw it a lot and didn't have to run it. But um, we got to continue to improve and we got to get guys healthy. Okay, let's go to Anthony Dasher and then Mark Weiser. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Uh, obviously, Stetson came in on the, on the third possession. Was that just a deal going in where you plan to play both guys? Yeah, to be honest with you, you know, JT was not 100% all week and uh, he, he practiced all week, but he didn't, I mean, he didn't necessarily go with the ones the whole time. We didn't know he was going to be able to go on Monday and we thought Stetson really practiced well and he and JT rolled uh, all week and we told him, uh, I guess it was Thursday or Friday, and we called him in and said, hey, look, you're both going to play and uh, we think JT's healthy enough to go, but we're going to play you Stetson and it's an unfortunate deal. Uh, Brock's route was a little shallow. Uh, and he you know, probably shouldn't have thrown it there. And he threw it a little high, sailed on him, and got it picked. So, unfortunate for Stetson, but he did have a good week of practice. And I've said it all along, and I continue to say it and stand by it. I have a lot of confidence in our quarterbacks, a lot of confidence in our quarterbacks. It, I can't say that I've ever had as much confidence in three to four guys that I've ever had. So, uh, Stetson earned that right, and uh, it just didn't work out. Herbie, you're talking about guys getting uh, contributions from, from you know, so many different guys on, on defense in particular. Nolan had uh, combined with the safety and then forced the fumble. 
Can you talk about his game now, uh, three games into the season, how, how he's developing, Will Smith? Uh, he's a great leader, one of the hardest workers. Um, you know, I'll reserve judgment how he played just off those two plays until I see the tape. But he is a extra effort, get after it, positive leader. Um, he impacts the game. I mean, tonight, those two plays, that, that sack fumble and the uh, safety were humongous plays in the game. Let's go Dean Leggy and then Jake Rowe. Hey, Kirby, how about y'all's pass rush? How much do you think that's affecting quarterbacks these days? I guess you'd have to ask them. I don't – a lot, I would think. But uh, our guys get off and pass rush. And, and there's a lot of detail that goes into that. Like the amount of time Trey Scott and Schumann and Dan, all the defensive guys spend on, on creating rush, right? Creating – it's not just one-on-one -on -one I beat my guy. It's games. It's twists. It's stunts. It's knowing when it's a pass, when it's a run, when I can take advantage of things. There's a lot of things our, our linebackers call to our front to get them in pass rush mode. And when they're in pass rush mode, they're pretty good. So I know it uh, affects quarterbacks. But I thought, you know, Luke Luke did a great job. He's a really good athlete. You know, he moved around. He made some plays with his feet. He bought time. He hurt us with some throws. Kirby, I know there's a big difference between being pleased and being satisfied. And, and I, I guess I just would like to ask you, it seemed like the game got a little sloppy there at times for you guys. Um, what, what would kind of cause this in this game for you to be a little bit short of satisfied from the, an overall performance? Uh, just execution of players. You know, there's things you work on during the week and there's things that th they just beat you sometimes, you know, like you be get beat one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lose my sleep over that. They, they threw some one-on-one -on -one balls and beat us. Um, but you don't execute when a coach tells you what play is coming on third down and you design, you show them the play and say, they're about to run this and then they run it and you don't stop it. That's, that's disheartening on offense. When you, you know, turn the ball over three times. We, we will not be a successful team if we turn the ball over three times. I don't care if we get three. We can't throw two interceptions and fumble one and beat good football teams. So that's a fact. That's not like that. That 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 will keep me from being satisfied or or pleased. Let's go to Connor Riley and then to uh, Catherine with the red and black. Hey Kirby, you got. Brock Bowers and Adonai Mitchell involved early tonight. What does it say about them that as freshmen, they're, they're already at this point three games into their careers making major contributions for you at this point in the year? It's the way of college football now. You know, a lot of good players leave junior years. A lot of freshmen come in early. You know, both those guys really aren't freshmen. They were here all spring. So uh, I look at it very different. They uh, got a lot of confidence in the spring. They got routes. Uh, we practice really hard. They go against a really good defense every day. So A.D. Mitchell and Brock have uh, competed at a high level, and they've earned that right. Uh, a great man and good friend who passed last week used to always say to me, if you're good enough, you're old enough. And that's compliments of my man Trevor Moad, who lost his uh, battle with cancer and meant so much to me personally and meant a lot to a lot of coaches. But I spent a year at Miami, nine at Alabama, and – four or five at Georgia uh, with Trevor. And he just touches my heart and soul to think about w the lives he touched. And that was something he used to say all the time. You know, if they're good enough, they're old enough. And they are. Hey, Coach, kind of going off of um, that last question with Adonai Mitchell, I wanted to ask you what he did in practice this week that made you think he deserved a, um, a starting position today? Well, you know, he. <laughs> He's talented. He, 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 he's learning how to work. He's, you know, I, 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 it's very similar to Jermaine Burton. You know, Jermaine Burton was a talented receiver last year that we felt like would get better the more he played. And, uh, you know, AD's got a lot of parts of his game to work on. The physicality, uh, but he does run routes. He does have uh, elusiveness, and uh, he has really good uh, first-step quickness. And our coaches felt like if we're going to go to where we want to get to, he's got to go play. 
and he's he's earned it. I mean, he's made plays. He's 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 a good football player, and uh, as he earns that, he makes our team better. And you know, I gotta say that Marcus Rosemi and Justin Robinson and a lot of those other guys, Lab McConkey and Jalen Johnson, they have done really critical good work, and they've gotten better. You know, Marcus caught a ball tonight and burst and got down the field, um, but AD has improved a lot too. And uh, as long as those guys are healthy and getting better, we got a chance to be a successful team. Let's go to uh, Jeff Schultz and then Brandon Sedge. Kirby, I know you're focused on your team, but as everybody tries to figure out kind of the pecking order in college football, um, you, you might know that like Clemson struggled to beat Georgia Tech today and Alabama had a hard time in, in Florida. I was just wondering what that tells you kind of about, you know, maybe the state of college football this year um, and maybe how it affects you guys. Yeah, I, had, I hadn't seen any scores. I was asking on the way over here, you know, who won the Penn State Auburn game. I didn't know. And, um, you know, it's weird to me. It's a weird year because not necessarily the Clemson score or the Alabama because, I mean, not, you know, playing at Florida is a tough place to play. But it's just different. It's a different feel to it because there's so many teams that uh, that I know are talented. And I'm not talking about those teams, but they lose to somebody that's like, man, what, they have no business losing to them. Or uh, upsets seem to be more prevalent. And we're not immune to that. So we're trying to heighten our awareness to – the standard, like, hey, can we we play the standard all the time? Are we going to go out there and, and, and be flat and not play to our standard? And it's hard when you're dealing with 18, 19, 21 years old because they get they get told all these things and they, they start reading and believing it. And I'm warning our guys all night, hey, look, you played well tonight, but let's be honest. We're on this, like, trajectory and we're trying to climb this thing. And on this flight, we're trying to take off. We're like – wheels up we're, we're getting there we're not we're not at the highest altitude yet and so what can we do to avoid that but i see it i see it every week in college football and we try to bring it to our guys attention hey uh kirby kind of uh following up on the defensive line in the pass rush i mean uh, i mean especially at home when it's a third down or a crucial situation and you're able to bring that pass rush and that pressure, how valuable um, how valuable is that unit at those moments? And then also, I know that you're not the type of guy who's going to say, like, uh, oh, they've done everything perfectly. So how can the pass rush kind of improve here? Like, what do you feel like that next uh, uh, step is? You know, I don't know. I have to watch this tape and see. I do think that uh, our guys are, are great get-off guys. I think people are going to scheme us up a little bit. You know, they're going to they're gonna protect first. They're going to chip us. They're going to seven-man protect. And they seven-man protect, it's hard to beat it. So, uh, we got to have some answers. You know, some of our sacks have been covered sacks. But tonight, uh, they had a nice plan. They got the ball out quick. They made it simple for the quarterback. And they beat us one-on-one -on -one some. So, when you lose one-on-one, -on -one, you can lose some third downs. We win a couple of those third downs. It's, it's, it's a worse situation for them. They were able to extend drives and able to do it. But, you know, I don't know how we improve it, but I can assure you this, our coaching staff will never rest. When you're, um, when you're ripe, you're rot. When you're ripe, you rot. And when you're green, you grow. And by God, we're going to stay green because we're, we're going to keep growing and getting better. Hey, we got time for a couple more. Let's go with Mike Griffith and then Palmer Toms. Yeah, Kirby, you mentioned a couple of the, the shots they, they took. I guess I would just ask you about those plays. You, you say sometimes those just happen or there's or there's some teaching or correctable things for Amir on a couple of those deep balls. Well, not just Amir. I mean, it was several guys, right? DK got one. Uh, he went up and got one, got one up and got one over top of him. Kamari got one. You know, um, they, they hit an over route on uh, Lewis. I think it came back and ended up being incomplete, but they had him and they, they ran through a double once. So it was not – just a mirror. It was several guys. And, uh, you know, Josh Fan had a good night for them. And, hey, we're going to face guys like him every week, every week. So you got to play with great technique. And I don't care what your pass rush is. It's not getting there before that ball's out. I mean, that ball's caught, catch, throw. So, we, you know, we can't protect guys all game. We got to play one on one. If you want to be a good defense, you better be able to play man to man. It's one of the number one qualities. And right now, we, we had some shots tonight that uh, guys got on top of us. So we have to improve, and we got to grow and develop some younger players. Kirby, y'all were 8 of 12 on third down tonight. JT was talking about how, how impressed he was. What, what were your takeaways on that? 
impressive. That one drive, I don't know if it was three or four third downs, man, but our offensive line picked things up. Kenny McIntosh stepped up and hit a guy right between the, the eyes on a blitz. They went soft zone. They went max blitz. They did it all, and we converted on each one. So when you're efficient on third down, man, you're hard to beat. You are hard to beat when you're – it's so frustrating for a defense to get to third and five, third and six, third and four, and you keep converting, and then you end up hitting an explosive. So I was proud of the ability to function and convert by our offense, which takes more than a throw and a catch. It's a lot of protection in there. Thank you, Coach Martin. Thank you, guys.